because the health and fitness world can get a little nutty, it's time for body kindness. Today we'll talk about our personal year-long efforts in practicing body kindness and clue you in to ways you can join us or set your own goals. We're also going to chat about this season's weight loss reality TV shows. Hello and welcome to Body Kindness, where happiness and health begin by being good to yourself. I'm your host and coach, Rebecca Scritchfield. And with me is Bernie Salazar. Hey, everybody. Thank you guys so much for listening and subscribing. You know, we're a new show and we want to hear from you. We want to know what did you like? How can we help? Shoot us an email. We've got that information in the show notes. And do us a favor. Tell all your friends about it. Let's get them on board as well. I think, you know, as a new show, we could certainly use all the help we can get. (laughs) Um, you know, Bernie, I'm really excited to chat this week because there's so much happening in the health and wellness right now. But first, I have a question for you. I want to ask you, what's one way you've shown your body some kindness this week? Oh, boy, you're starting right off with the questions. <laughs> if if, if uh, the listeners out there tune into the first podcast, Rebecca's notorious for this. Um, repeat it one more time. I, okay. I have to hear it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. You're new dad. I was, you get... <laughs> I was, I was literally thrown off by the fact that you were going to, you were going for the big guns right away. <laughs> so, well, um, as you know, you know, we've worked together a lot before and I love to start off with something positive and something good. Uh-huh. So, um, I thought that we would start off by just reflecting and thinking about ways that we have done good at taking care of ourselves. So what I would really like to know is, um, giving me, um, Have you give me one example um, of a way that you've shown your body some kindness this week? So, uh, Rebecca, one thing that I did this week uh, to really encourage uh, my own body kindness was start dressing up the body that I'm currently in. Uh, I feel that a lot of uh, people, myself definitely included, you know, the more weight that I gain, the lower my fashion sense goes. Uh, It's almost like you don't feel comfortable in the clothes that you once used to look at yourself in the mirror in and just kind of wow at. Uh, So this week I made it a a point to actually uh, dress up, feel good about myself, and uh, I really felt as though my day went better as a result of it. That's so awesome. Can you give me an example of how your day went better? Just um, so it sounds like you made a decision to choose to put care into what how you were dressing yourself. Um, and that made you feel better? Absolutely. Listen, as a new dad, you know, and also not really being happy with where I am body wise, but knowing that I'm in in the process of changing it, I thought to myself, why am I not showing that to myself first and foremost, but also to the rest of the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when I, I dressed my body up, you know, this body that I'm in, because I think a lot of times, and Becca, you can attest to this, you probably hear, oh, when I get to this size, I'm going to buy this and it's going to look good on me. And man, am I going to be a showstopper? Well, you know what? You're a showstopper now. You just have to, you just have to dress for the body that you're in. And that's something that we had talked about a while back, Rebecca. Uh, So it's not like I came up with this concept. It's just that I used it. And uh, I can honestly say that I felt better about myself this week. That's awesome. I'm so proud of you. I mean, you're, you're hitting on as far as body kindness goes, you know, that it's about love, connection, and caring. And so this is a way of connecting to your body to say, look, I'm going to take care of you. And you brought up a point that, that you would like to lose weight. And remember, weight loss is a side effect of habits. Um, not everybody wants to lose weight. And it's it's okay when people do when they're focused on habits they can stick to the rest of their life. But what you're saying is like, I'm going to take care of you now. I'm going to love you now. I'm going to take care of you now. I'm going to care for you now. And that includes respecting the body that you have and treating that body well. And that includes in your dress and your appearance. So that is fabulous. It's a great job. And I really encourage you. Well, and I encourage our, our, our listeners to, to, to do this, you know, take time and, and don't tell yourself, oh, when I reach this goal or when I, I feel I'm in this place, you know what? You are worth dressing up right now. You are a present. Wrap it up. Wrap <laughs> yourself up. Put the bow on top. Go out there. Face the world and show them what you got. Because I'll tell you from personal experience, it feels so much better. Right. And, you know, we have to live the life we have now you know, and you're, you're doing it. So great job. Um, I wanted to share my example of body kindness and this one was, um, you know, pretty tough for me. 
I, um, last week got really sidelined pretty bad with a sinus infection. What my tendency normally to do is to just keep going. And I was just telling myself, you know, it's just a bad cold. You can do it. And I was just getting even more sick. And it got to the point where I couldn't even sleep at night. And I said, okay, something is wrong. You need to go see a doctor. And sure enough, I had a sinus infection. She actually looked in my ears and said, dear God, that ear is angry. (laughs) 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 And so, you know, like, so there is a a body kindness lesson here, believe it or not. It, um, I just decided, you know what? It doesn't matter what else is going on. Like your body is talking to you. You need rest. You need sleep. And for the next few days, I turned off my email. I crawled into bed. I had my box of tissues, my water, my medicine, and I just rested. Even if I couldn't sleep, I just laid there. And I had a lot of difficulty with it. I had a really harsh, negative voice just telling me like, oh, there's all this work that's not going to get done and suck it up. Other people don't, you know, succumb to their illnesses like you do. And it was just, you know, do you deal with that? Like that really nasty inner critic that's just mean to you? Well, absolutely. I mean, I deal with it all the time. And knowing you, Rebecca, listeners, you'd understand. Like Rebecca will literally uh, uh, try to run a 50 miler in, in a snowstorm if she feels that's what she needs to do. Um, but I'm so proud of you uh, just on a personal level. Uh, I know how hard it is for you to disconnect uh, and, and care for yourself in that way. And I think that, you know, Rebecca – if I can offer my opinion to you is the fact that you are in charge of so many different things in your life, not just your business and your clients, but you know, you're a mom and you're a wife and you have responsibilities. And I know that so many people depend on you that it was, I think it's critical that you took that time. Cause I actually saw it on some of your social media, you know, <laughs> kind of leading up to what I guess eventually became this, you know, shut off from, from your, your professional life. And I just thought to myself, good for her. It's about time <laughs> yeah. that, that she unplugged to feel better. Right. And you know, what What I saw is the most difficult thing, but why it was my favorite example of body kindness this week was that um, it was despite the negative voice, despite the criticism, despite the negativity, I said, you know, no, my body needs rest and everything else will be fine. My family was there to support me to take care of myself. Nothing crazy happened. The work was still there waiting for me when I felt better. There but- you go. The world <laughs> didn't end because Rebecca disconnected. Exactly. And so just, you know, you know, no matter how listeners are out there taking good care of themselves and being good to themselves, everything you do matters. It adds up to boost your mood and your energy levels. And sometimes that means just shutting it off because you don't feel well. And that is also taking care of yourself. So, you know, Rebecca, speaking of being good to ourselves or not, uh, I did want to talk a little bit about the reality shows out there, uh, specifically the biggest loser. I've been watching this season, uh, definitely, uh, concerned a bit about what I saw the other day, which was uh, at the final weigh-in, and I'm not sure how many of our listeners actually watch the show. It's okay if you don't. uh, They step on a scale uh, to get weighed in, and during that weigh-in, I saw some contestants who were just floored and saddened and angered by the fact that they had only lost four or five pounds that week, and I remember thinking, gosh, you know, that's that's the stress that being on the show kind of puts you under. But if we were in the real world, how would they have taken that that type of loss? That's such a a big number. You know, when you think about it, what's what's realistic, uh, Rebecca, when you're actually caring for yourself? I mean, what's state? Yeah. You know, the truth is it's it's even giving a realistic number from my perspective is not realistic because everybody is so different, you know, and it depends on what you're doing. And, you know, I, I personally don't think that the real world is in line with what we see on quote reality TV. Um, some of my concerns when I was watching the biggest loser, I mean, well, first of all, the weirdest thing was when they showed the gym, Bob Harper was like, oh, it's going to get ugly in here. I mean, 
Okay, wait a minute. So now we're supposed to associate the gym for a place where bad things happen? I just, that does not make sense to me, you know? And then it's like the camera cuts to puke buckets and people puking. Like, look, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to exercise if it's going to make me puke. That's just so unrealistic, you know, to me. And, well, I would argue with the most people but you know even things like that i just think it sets people up for failure and you're right on top of that to put forth effort and be disappointed with any amount of weight loss it's just not the healthy path it's not the way. yeah and and rebecca you and i have talked about this uh uh personally you know my relationship with the show uh i i it's been one of of slight contention because of 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 situations like this and he, I'm even still hesitant to talk about aspects of it uh, but I am going to do that you know you're absolutely right first of all with Bob's comment I was thrown off by it I know Bob you know is a great trainer and a good man but that comment that he made totally floored me as well and it's one that you kind of walk away from the show feeling to be honest you know you went in there you left your buns on the ground with how hard that we worked out you cannot take anything away from the intensity of those workouts but i was left with a little bit of a negative uh, uh, uh feeling towards gyms in general you know and that's why i spent the good majority of my time after the show really focusing on more natural movements, getting outside more, being more active. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And, you know, you mentioned intense workouts, and here's what I got to say about that. I mean, I, um, I like intense workouts, but that's not all I do. And the more important message is you don't have to like intense workouts. You do not have to work out at a high level of intensity to get the health benefits. And body kindness is about health. It is not about weight loss. And, you know, intensity in an exercise should still feel good. It should still empower you. It should make you feel strong. It should make you feel happy and healthy and powerful. And usually intensity moments are followed by periods of lower intensity. And I'm sorry, I don't want to hurt your feelings. I know you were a winner of The Biggest Loser, but it's just not healthy or motivating for long-term wellness. And I think the show is also fat shaming, you know? Um, Well, it's it's interesting you say that. I'm going to chime right in. And I I love this conversation we're having because I feel like we're actually getting very real on this real talk here. Everything that you're saying and everything that we're, we're saying and where I'm now at, especially working with you, Rebecca, is counter to what I've learned, uh, uh, throughout my own weight loss journey. You know, it was, you know, high intensity, you know, uh, uh, go, go, go. Uh, the, the eating was, was done well. I can honestly say that I was coached well as far as the eating, but at the same time, there were aspects of it that were not, you know, there was the whole, you know, good food, bad food relationship that, that we will eventually probably talk about more so on this show. The record does have to be set straight in a lot of different ways because there are people viewing these shows. I'm not saying that they're bad. Don't watch them. I'm saying be realistic about the information you're getting. At the end of the day, it is entertainment. Yeah, you're right. It is important to keep in mind that it is put out there for entertainment purposes. And, you know, um, I just think that for, they're not my kind of thing either, but from what I was watching, um, you know, I really had difficulty even with the mindset. Um, So I was mentioning earlier that there's, you know, there's a mother-daughter team, um, and, I, you know, I noticed the mom, you know, she said, like, you know, I don't want my daughter to be like me, you know, 53 and fat. And it's like, that is shaming. You know, someone else said, oh, I don't want to be the fat girl anymore. This is using, you know, somebody's weight and shape as a way of judgment and it's harmful. I mean, I don't understand why the perspective can't be, you know, I've spent a lot of years not taking good care of myself. I haven't built healthy habits. It's really important to me to realize I have a lot of years in my life yet left. I want to be a good role model for my daughter. And so I want to do healthy habits 
And, you know, I'd love to work with my daughter on it too. I don't understand why shaming of weight and shape has to be the narrative in shows like The Biggest Loser. Well, it's it's interesting you say that because uh, then I start thinking, well, is that the narrative of specifically, you know, some a show like The Biggest Loser or the My Diet is Better Than Yours type deal? Or is it the larger narrative that, that shows like this are just feeding into? One of the things that really surprised me, Rebecca, was while I was watching The Biggest Loser, even though, again, I, I have very mixed feelings about my experience on it, I did find myself almost itching and wanting to start moving at an intenser pace. The person next to me was competing and it was almost like this Pavlovian condition, like go, like the bell rings. As soon as the the, the theme music comes on, Bernie starts trying to outdo something. I, who am I going to outdo here in my home? You know, it's, it's interesting how, how conditioned I, I still am. Do you think that is a positive motivator like this is making me want to take care of myself or is it more like trying to hustle oh crap I've regained weight that I've lost and I was on this show better you know start running faster or something I don't know like where do you think that's coming from it really is uh, a mixture of both Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that it definitely is, oh, well, I was an at-home winner on this show, and, you know, what were to happen if I were to be, you know, go back on this show, what what would be the overall thought of, of where I'm at currently? Um, but part of it is also, I remember uh, my experience after the show, after I'd kind of found a healthier place for myself, and I'm not saying I found that on the show, but afterwards... I know what it feels like to be at that healthy place. So it's almost like, well, why aren't you there right now? So it was a combination of both. I don't know if that answered your question, but yes, I, I found it to be both good and bad. Okay. No, I think that's a, that's, that's yeah. your answer. So therefore it's a perfect answer and it's correct. <laughs> um, so, but it's interesting because you talked about, um, you know, you alluded to earlier and, and um, also on that first show about goals and goals that, um, you know, you wanted to work on. And I said, I was going to share some of mine too, but so I did want to take a moment and check in with you. Um, I remember that you talked about, um, something that you wanted to work on was improving your, uh, the quality of the food that you were eating. And, um, you said like, you know, I really want the plate to reflect the person I want to be in. Um, so I talked about, you know, eating more balanced and how that could be seen as a positive and energizing thing. So, you know, um, I'm just curious, I know you're a new dad, a lot going on, but um, have you made any headway on eating um, better, more nutritiously, or anything like that that you want to share? Or if there's anything I can do to help, let me know. Rebecca, I'm going to share with you, I took a baby step. And I think that that was, uh, I'm very proud of myself, actually. Uh, so my plate doesn't truly reflect who I want to be just yet, but it is one little step closer. Uh, what I've done this week, uh, actually with the help of, of some loved ones, is start really having more meals at home. So uh, I, I've, I've eaten out a lot less this week. And for any of you, you know, professionals out there who are new parents, uh, sometimes it seems as though your only uh, friend as far as meals go is a, is a drive through or a delivery service. So uh, I'm happy about that win, Rebecca. And uh, this week, if I can share with you really quickly, I, I want to make sure that um, even though I, as I continue to eat more uh, prepared meals here in my home, I want to make sure they're more reflective of, of uh, the vegetables that I talked about, the fruits, just really increasing those portions. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And you mentioned a baby step. Remember, all steps are worth it. Um, big or small doesn't matter. It's that we're taking a step. And I actually think eating more meals at home is a big step because it opens up so much opportunity. Now you're choosing the types of food and the quality and the balance. You're sitting down with others and you're having a conversation. So you're not distracted eating in the car or in front of the TV, but you're sitting down and you're sharing moments with people and there's bonding going on. And you know, those are all very important things. Well, not just that. That's a really good point, Rebecca. Another thing that I found myself really examining uh, through th- this experience was how much love and care went into the preparation of this food. You know, that's not something mm-hmm. that I think about when, I, when I'm out there eating, you know, outside of my home. I know that a tremendous amount of love went into the meal that was prepared, and it just goes down better. 
Yep. It just goes down better. Yep. And by the way, that love counts if it's mama's homemade mac and cheese or a grilled kale salad that, but you're right. When others prepare food for you or there's a, there, there's a special memory from where that comes from. You know, we don't need to fear individual ingredients. We don't need to count the calories in that. Balance is important, you know, and you don't have to have it perfectly balanced, but we strive for balance and you mentioned it. Fruits, vegetables, proteins, whole grains. That one of the th- quick things that I like to do is this idea of like half plate healthy. Um, and so last night we got pizza and, you know, I was driving back from Richmond. I was tired. I didn't want to cook or clean. I knew it would not be a push. Ask my husband, Hey, you want to get pizza tonight? And he was game. <laughs> He's always game for pizza. <laughs> but, you know, we did order some salad and we did try to, you know, start out with half our plate was salad and half our plate was pizza. And we enjoyed the food and the conversation. And we did not need to know, you know, every other detail about that food, but that we could sit together, enjoy a quick meal. We got some, you know, mushrooms on the pizza too. Um, And just without the judgment, you know? And so all those things are really good. I would just encourage you to keep going, keep making those baby steps, keep eating more at home, keep balancing your plate and, you know, try to keep using the feel great guide. Um, you know, it, there are, there's a health and happiness journal where you can kind of track balance on the plate that you might find help with. Um, listeners, if you don't have it, you can get that. If you go to my website, I'll have the link in the show notes. Um, you just need to sign up for my email list and you get that for free. And, um, that could be a great tool to help you too. You know, Becca, can I chime in on that? I I did complete my health and happiness journal uh, yesterday, and I just want to share a couple uh, points that I felt maybe our listeners could relate to. So uh, at the very beginning, it asks, how am I feeling overall today? And I woke up feeling happy, tired, uh, really tired, um, but ready to take on my day. So I slept about five or six nights. And anybody who has a newborn uh, knows that that was like an eternity. My wife just picked up the slack. She's fantastic. So I got to sleep a good six hours. Um, I went for a 30-minute walk uh, in the morning, which to me was was, uh, where the goal was. And I, I met it. I was happy about that. The further along through my day, it's like the more you drudge through. At the end of the day, if I can share that note, it was almost like I was mindlessly eating dinner and it wasn't that I was mindlessly grabbing things that maybe I I didn't want to eat I just wasn't enjoying that meal as much as I could have and that's part of this you know did you enjoy it did you did you really pay attention were you present and I can honestly say that I, I wasn't so Rebecca what would you what would you suggest how I mean what's your thoughts on a long day and not being present knowing you still have to get something in your body you know I found myself at a, at a somewhat of a little crossroad. Yeah. Well, you know, thanks for asking. I mean, look, it, um, nothing you're saying is surprising me because it's actually, there's a lot of human nature going on in what you, um, are struggling with. It's kind of like it starts off good and then it downward spirals eventually. Oh yeah. Yeah, I was on a slide. (laughs) Yeah. And, and that's actually a lot of, um, of how your brain works. So, for, you know, I, as as a new dad, you're right. Six hours, you're doing great, you know. Um, but yeah. six hours isn't enough for a typical person. So you're already kind of going to have your hormones off a little bit with your hunger and, and fullness and satiety. That's already going to be a bit out of whack. But you're probably energized in the morning and you're energized by what you're eating, but that energy does wear off. And so you get fatigued sooner. But notice how your challenges came later in the day. It, think of all the choices you had to make all day long for yourself, for your meals, for Jennifer, for taking care of your baby. I mean, so many choices. Our brains get tired and we lose energy. We lose steam and mindfulness and being present. Um, that takes energy until it becomes a habit and it's effortless. So I'm really just not surprised. I don't really know if there's anything that you could do differently, except maybe have permission to realize, you know what? I'm not enjoying this meal. Sometimes I'll, I'll call meals like it's just all business. You know, it's probably not the best time. <laughs> it's probably not yeah. the best time to eat pizza because you really can't enjoy it. You know, that, you know, make, make it an all business meal or something and just put, you know, some tuna on the plate, any fruit. You can't mess it up. Any, any vegetable. Um, and just, and just notice and be aware, like this isn't really tasting that good. You're probably tired. You probably want to sleep. There's probably other things going 
going on that's just not every meal is going to be like, you know, that the most special, most memorable meal. And that is OK. So just, you know, noticing that's, that's a it. really interesting suggestion. And an idea that I that just popped in my head when you, when you were sharing that with me was what do you think about this, Rebecca? You're going to think <laughs> I'm nuts and that's fine. Um uh, one of those break in case of emergency meals. And what I mean by that is, is, you know, kind of when, and I'm, I'm, I'm picturing this in my head, I'm walking through this. One of those days where I'm just completely beat up like yesterday. I know I'm not going to really pay much attention to what it is that I'm eating, whether it be nutritious or not. If I literally have a break in case of emergency meal where I've pre-planned what's going to happen when I know I'm not, you know, going to enjoy it or not enjoy it either way. You know, uh, but I know that if I maybe pre-plan it, that I can make sure that it's 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 healthier for me than maybe what I normally grab. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think certainly any amount of planning that you can do as a new dad is beneficial. We should definitely dedicate an entire show to planning and how we can work our way through planning. But certainly, um, planning starts from looking in your refrigerator and pantry to what you put in your grocery list to what you buy in the store. And you should have your staples, nutritious foods that you love to eat, that you know are easy, you can have on hand, fresh frozen can, doesn't matter. Having those on hand and having an idea or an intention for what do you grab for breakfast? What do you grab for lunch and snacks and dinner? And absolutely, like if, if you're... If you're needing to make dinner, you don't want to go through the effort of preparing something and you have something else that could be balanced, that can work, take the shortcut because maybe you need a little bit of extra rest. Maybe you need to go to bed a little bit earlier. Um, but certainly having this sort of in case of emergency, in case I'm not enjoying this meal, be flexible to switch to something else. Or like I said, if it's you already went through the effort of making it, it's okay to have a meal that you're not in love with. But you don't have to finish your plate. Once you're comfortably full, just let the meal be over. A lot of times my clients who struggle with emotional overeating, they get disappointed that the meal wasn't delicious. And then so they look for something else. So they end up overeating because they're sad because they weren't satisfied from the meal. Make mm -hmm. sense? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's something I've, I've, I've done. I've, I can totally relate. Yeah. You know, you all of a sudden you feel like you didn't get what you wanted out of the meal. And then all this, you know, you're doing these little, uh, almost like these little Michael Jackson, you know, moonwalk steps to figure out <laughs> what's going on. If somebody saw me in my kitchen, they're like, I don't know if he's dancing or, or on the prowl uh, looking for something. So I, I can relate. Yeah. I really can. Um, really quickly, Rebecca, I wanted to share with you um, something that I saw on your 30-day uh, drop challenge okay. uh, that I'm going to give a try this week, so I want you to hold me accountable. Not that this is a hard one, guys. Uh, she has a recipe for a stuffed acorn squash that I'm definitely going to give a go, and one of the things that really made me want to do this is that it includes sausage. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that one of the things I'm like, oh, this recipe is going to be awesome. <laughs> Why? Because it includes sausage. Like, I'm not even paying attention to the fact that that it's acorn squash and lord knows where i'm gonna pick an acorn squash up you know sometimes i'm one of those guys where i don't know necessarily i can't even picture an acorn squash in my head just yet i don't know how good or bad that is <laughs> but i love the fact that i i it includes sausage so i just wanted to share that with right. you <laughs> well that's awesome and you know i would encourage um anyone to to try new recipes and experiment it doesn't matter how easy or complicated you make it that's not the point but when we get excited like a little reward chemical when we're trying something new and that goes for everything food exercise and um, you know so there's a little bit of curiosity or uncertainty but that's how we end up building habits is by giving ourselves exposure to new things so try it out let me know what you think about it and um, I'm glad you brought up the 30-day drop because we are wrapping um, that up now that it's uh, toward the end of January but anyone who signs up for the email list um, can get all of those weekly emails that were part of the 30 day drop. And you're going to be automatically included in my year long challenge that I'm going to kick off in February, but I'm going to announce on the podcast today. And you don't even know about this yet, Bernie, but no, I do not. <laughs> I'm ready for it. <laughs> so what we're going to do is a whole year of ditching diets. 
I love it. I love it. I love it. You should have you should have cued me sooner. I would have done the drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> but um so this is going to be great. You know, um out so basically with my email list, I try to send um emails one to two times a week and um it's a free um subscription to um to subscribers and um basically what I'm going to do is every month give a new challenge, something you can focus on um, that goes along with the time of year or a trend. And it's going to be positive things that you can do instead of dieting. So the very first one that's going to be coming out in February is going to be about boosting your mood with body kindness. Um, I like it. Yeah. And, you know, it, February is the time we have the least amount of sun. Our vitamin D is low. And we tend to kind of get those dreary doldrums. Maybe not you and the wonderful weather of California that you have. Yeah, I can't <laughs> complain. Well, El Nino has definitely had uh, pl- played its little role here on us. But for everybody else out there, yes. I understand. <laughs> right. And so so um, we'll have that coming up, and hopefully that'll be a lot of fun for us to carry throughout our show episodes as well. I have a lot of great ideas for there. But um, at the end of the day, you know, it, it has taken a lot of my clients um, some time to overcome dieting. And so I just want to offer something that's positive and encouraging that people can do all year long. Um, and I also wanted to share with you really quickly about my resolution and something that I've I've committed to, and I haven't broken it yet. So this is my longest resolution to date. Um, but what I've committed to is a, yeah. Yeah, I know, yay. Yes, um, I I've committed to a year of kindness. And this is whether it's kindness to myself or kindness to others. And every day I'm keeping it super simple because when I overthink, I don't complete. So I, I literally ask myself, what's the least amount of effort I could put into this? So all I do is I open up a new page in my journal and I write down the date and what I did that was either kind to myself or someone else. And I'm sharing those on Instagram. So you can follow me there. Um, I'll have that in the show notes, but like, for example, um, when I finally decided to go to the doctor, I put that in there, um, or I made lunch for a friend who really needed it and that made me feel good. So that counted. And what I'm noticing so far is that doesn't matter if it's something for me or somebody else. When I'm nice to myself, I feel better. And when I feel better, I'm happier and I think it's making me healthier too. So um, I want you to hold me accountable to this year of kindness. So, so far it's been, you know, um, a matter of days, but I've done it every day and I just want to keep it going throughout the year and I hope to really learn and grow from it. Well, you know what? And that's a really good thing. And I just want to be the first to to applaud you on this because I have been following just, you know, your year of kindness um, on Instagram. And it's really neat for all our listeners out there. If you go ahead and follow Rebecca Scritchfield on Instagram, what's interesting about it is she literally shows this note that she jots down in her journal of how that went today. And, and me personally, that would be tremendously a difficult task because there is so much you know negative thoughts that seep in and out or you forget to be kind not just to others but to yourself so I I commend you I wish you luck you definitely have my support in making sure that you stick to it and I'd like to really encourage some of our viewers out there uh, to to at least try to incorporate this into their life you know a couple times this year (laughs) (laughs) cool Um, well I found something um in the research area that I wanted to talk about just really briefly, and I'll share uh, a link in the show notes. But, um, and I want to dedicate some future episodes to talking more about intuitive eating. Um, it is the approach that I, um, follow and I work with clients on and, um, Intuitive eating is just eating the way that we were born to eat. Um, it's not a diet. It is not focused on weight loss. It's focused on being good to yourself, um, which is the body kindness way. Uh, but what I found really interesting is a study that came out toward the end of 2015. And um, it was the first study that compared intuitive eating to mindful eating and also restraint, which you could consider that like food rules or policing your food or the typical things that you find like diet restraint. And what they found in this study is that higher restraint or the food rules or the dieting was associated with a higher body mass index and disordered eating. But intuitive eating was associated with 
a lower body mass index and less risk of disordered eating. Yeah. So I just thought that was really cool. You know, a lot of people think, well, I need to diet because that's going to help me lose weight. I need to have food rules because that's going to help me lose weight. And the truth is, you know, I read the sciencey stuff, so you don't have to if you don't want to, but the diets actually lead to weight gain and higher BMIs. And we're seeing this repeated in research. Um, and I just wanted to share that with you. Um, you know, I know that you're motivated to never diet again. Good job. You know, but look at intuitive eating and start thinking about in embracing intuitive eating as a way, a structure and a framework to let go of food rules and approach a more realistic, a more caring, a more body kindness way to eating. Um, you know, that being said, Rebecca, I do have a question of the week from our, our very first question of the week. So this is so exciting to me. I'm excited um, we got one. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's out of Florida of all places. It says, I've got a question. It's, it's, it's from Florida. And she asks, guys, I need your help mentally. I'm so over diets, but I can't help but be interested the next time one pops up. I thought, wow, can I lose weight and eat tacos? I want to try it. What's going on? First of all, Rebecca, let me chime in really quick. Taco diet. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That means all of my beautiful Latino people should be in shape. Is that, <laughs> is that what this is? Explain this to me because I have not heard of this one. Yeah. Well, the first thing I want to say is if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, this is what happened when Jennifer Aniston, you know, who loves tacos, I think there was this interview and um, they said, oh, yeah, there's a new book out called The Taco Cleanse. And, you know, and she got interested in it. So then, of course, Today Show picks it up. And that's just the way that things work. So, I mean, no, it's you're Jennifer <laughs> Aniston. That's, that's, of all people, that doesn't sound very frenzied. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, but in all seriousness, to, to answer the listener's question, this is actually a very common thing. Um, it has to do with mindset and, um, and just the way our brains work. And the truth of it is, is that we actually get this little reward at the allure of dieting because we think, oh, Maybe this time it will work or maybe, you know, I don't want to miss out on potential benefits. And so there's kind of, you know, whether it's a fear of missing out or this little rush of the hope that like maybe this one will work. And actually in a lot of ways, that's where I consider dieting almost like the process of the hope of dieting to be addictive if you think about it because like this listener is saying every time something comes around it's like I just keep thinking well maybe this is the one or maybe this is the answer and so you should know that your brain is actually sending this little signal because you imagine yourself having succeeded on the diet that you become interested in it and when you're interested it's hard to resist and your brain likes that little dopamine reward of what if, what if this is the one, what if this is the time. So I would just say, be strong. You know, you can eat tacos without doing the taco cleanse. <laughs> yes. You know, and, and what a good point, Rebecca, because, you know, for our listeners out there, I just encourage you to kind of look around. And if you're anything like me, you literally have a library of different workout DVDs or books or magazines. And it is. You hit it right in the head. It's the excitement of thinking, well, oh, my gosh, if this is it, I can't be left behind. Like, there's no way I'm going to be left behind if, if you know, so-and-so on the TV went from that to that. Oh, my gosh. Imagine what I'm going to do because I'm, I'm just – I'm ready for this. Right. And that and that's FOMO, the fear of missing out. And we uh, – as humans, we like to do what other people are doing. And we don't want to be the one who doesn't get the big chicken, you know. We, we don't want to be the Absolutely. war that doesn't get the big reward. And so it's so important to just stay true to you – your beliefs, your values, what you care about. I mean, if there was one taco diet cleansy thing that worked, trust me, we would all be doing it. 
Um, and it's just not true. It's not, it's, you know, it, it, it's much, much better to build habits that you can stick with realistically, you know, habits that include tacos. Um, and just, I don't need to, you know, use up a lot of time talking about it, but I will include in the show notes today, some interesting articles I found online that are along the lines of this. Um, I'll share that the Jennifer Aniston, um, article also a really good piece in the guardian uh, that talked about, um, how no diet or detox will really help you and that we really need to relearn the art of eating. And I think that'll be a good segue for listeners to, um, in the next show, maybe talk a little bit more about, um, intuitive eating and how do we kind of break free from, um, from this whole mindset and approach around, um, dieting. Cause it is tough, but it, you know, look, if, if it was going to work for you, it would have, it would have worked already. You know, Rebecca, thanks for that. I can't wait to hear more about that. And I'd like to encourage all our listeners out there, if you uh, know somebody that can benefit from our podcast, please share this with them uh, and continue tuning on in so that we can really just learn to be kinder to ourselves together. You know, Bernie, that's what it's all about, just being good to ourselves and um, living a happier, healthier life and the life we deserve. Absolutely. I wanted to just close on a quote from one of my favorite authors, Anne Lamott. And she says, oh my God, what if you wake up someday and you're 65 or 75 and you never got your memoir or novel written? Or you don't go swimming in the warm pools and oceans all those years because your thighs were jiggly and you had a nice, big, comfortable tummy and you were just so strung out on perfectionism and people pleasing that you forgot to have a big, juicy, creative life of imagination and radical silliness and staring off into space like when you were a kid. It's going to break your heart. Don't let this happen. And again, that's Anne Lamott. And, you know, she's so right. She's basically saying, live now, live the life you want now. And there's nothing getting in your way. And if you don't, you're going to regret it. Absolutely. And Rebecca, not only live the life you want, live the life you deserve. So go out there, live that big, juicy, radically wonderful, crazy life that you deserve. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I will. And you too, too. Until next time. Until next time.